did it begin? Hello, um, this is M.L. King, Jr. M.L. King? Be nice to him. Well, uh, a mutual friend of ours, Gloria McGrew, well, she's been telling me some very wonderful things about you. Well, yeah, well, that's nice. Uh, yes, I've heard some nice things about you, too. Well, thank you. Uh, every Napoleon has his Waterloo, and I have the feeling I'm about to approach mine. Now, um, when am I going to be able to see you? Well, I, I, I don't know. Um, uh, my evenings are pretty full this week. Um, how about lunch? I'm free uh, between 12 and 1, I'm, I'm be between classes. Well, great. Then I'll meet you on the 100th Avenue side tomorrow. I have a great Chevy, and it usually takes me 10 minutes to make the trip from Boston University, but tomorrow I'll do it in 7. It's nice of you to try to play Cupid for me, but it would also be nice if you let me know in advance. Haven't you ever heard of M.L. King Jr., son of Martin Luther King Sr.? Who is he? You haven't heard of Martin Luther King Sr.? He's the most well-known minister in Atlanta. He's on the board of the First Black Bank there. Oh? And what does his son do? He's studying to be a minister, too. Oh, that's all I need is a Baptist preacher. M.L. King, Jr. I'm really glad that you don't have a delicate appetite. <laughs> it's usually peanut butter and graham cracker sandwiches for me. Oh, excuse me. Have you tried the pecan pie here? They got the best pecan please, pie please. you've ever seen since you left home. Don't bother. Here, there's two up. Thank you. One for now, one to take home later. Thank you. It's a pleasure just to watch you eat. You're making me feel a little self-conscious. Where are you from? A small town just outside of Marion. Where? Highburger. Highburger. <laughs> so funny about that. <laughs> you know one of my favorite stories is about Highburger. <laughs> Let me tell it to you. These two guys from Highburger steal his pigs, see? And then they get away car, and the police car comes over and pulls them over to the side. So the first guy says, oh, Lord, what are we going to do about this pig? So the other guy tells him, just put your hat on it. Well, the cop comes over, and he says, uh, let me see your license, boy. So the guy in the back is trying to keep the pig quiet, but wouldn't you know that pig makes a noise? So the cop goes around to the back, and he says, what's your name, boy? And the guy tells him, so I said, well, what's your name? And the guy makes the pig make a noise. <laughs> so the cop goes back to his partner at the car. He said, you know something, I've always known that niggas were some ugly damn creatures. But you know something, there's one nigga sitting in the back of that car named Oink who's the blackest, ugliest, damnedest nigga i ever seen in my life. <laughs> That was a very funny story. <laughs> um, what are you majoring in? Performing arts. That's right. Yeah, Gloria told me you were studying music. What you gonna be, another Ella Fitzgerald? I want to be a concert singer. Really? Wow. Boy, that's wonderful. You know, I never met a concert singer. Well, I'm really not quite one yet. Where have you sung? I gave a concert in Marion. They seem to like me. Well, it must take a lot of courage just to say, I'm going to be a concert singer. What made you decide that? I went to see Paul Robeson. came to Antioch, you know? Some of the people in the town were afraid to go to see him. I suppose they felt that they would be thought as his communists. 
Imagine missing a chance to see Paul Robeson because of his politics. Hmm. So you thought of other things besides music? Didn't you think I would? You know, I'm probably going to marry you. What are you talking about? It's probably just the way it's going to happen. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so, since you don't even know me. I have everything anybody would want, Curry. Listen, please don't feel you have to use those silly little compliments on me. I'm not a silly little girl. I'm a grown woman. You are beautiful. Don't you think you are? No, I don't. being an experimental student. Oh. Oh, you know what it's like. Everybody thinks you're so nice and that uh, you're an exception. Why can't other colored people be like you? <laughs> he was this Jewish boy, though. He seemed to be different. I mean, it, it wasn't anything serious. We were just good friends. One day, a bunch of us jumped into a station wagon to go to a music festival near Whelan. And when we got to the city limits, he uh, telephoned his folks. We were supposed to have dinner together. I asked him if he told them uh, that I was Negro, and he said, huh, what for? Well, when we got to the restaurant, we had to go upstairs to a special room, because I was with them. I just saw his courage evaporate. And then, of course, there was not room enough at the house to put us up for the night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just didn't have the guts. Well, <laughs> I know that I'm going to have to put up with this for the rest of my life, but nobody is going to make me feel that it's right. No. Don't ever feel that it's right. What about you? Well, I was pretty secure on Auburn Avenue in Atlanta. See, my dad was kind of a hero there, but I guess the first time that anything happened to me was when I started to school. I, I went home with this white boy, and I was pretty shocked when his mother wouldn't let me in the house because I was black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll do all right. Ministers always do. You don't care very much for ministers, do you? Well, maybe it's just the ones at home. They always seem to care more for their parishioners' souls rather than uh, if they have enough at home to eat. And is that all you dislike about them? What about their, uh, their cowardice? What about their upholding the status quo? What about them turning religion into the very opposite of what it's supposed to mean? You know, Arthur Rubenstein is giving a concert this Friday at the Symphony Hall. Um, may I take you? I know you don't mean I care very much for me, but you're bound to like the music. 